Thank you very much for uh, joining me today in this live webinar. The topic is the role of a career center on a modern day college and university campus. For the past two years, I've really been uh, working on rebranding my career center. I am currently the director of business career services, the chair of career education, and an adjunct professor at Loyola University of Chicago, Quinlan School of Business. I also work for the nursing school uh, where I teach global health and I'm also on the advisory roundtable for health systems management. The field of career services is, is really rapidly changing and largely it's because of some of the new themes that you're seeing surface that have a lot to do with meaningful work, finding your true ambition, and I like to say connecting passion to purpose. So I believe so much that in sort of the concept of um, and the importance of connecting passion to purpose that I helped with my team obviously rebrand our entire department. You know what we did is is focus on that brand. Really, we had to walk the talk, I guess you could say, and really apply this to our own careers. In fact, uh, making sure that what we're doing in our jobs is really aligned with our passion, with our motivation. What I wanted to do today is really to talk about some of the, the new trends that we're seeing, specifically the career services paradigm shift. What's our role uh, as, a, as a career center? And then how do we lead change and in innovation and in career development when it's become so important? Uh, I was gonna talk a little bit about some of our strategic initiatives and then a little bit about enticing employers. So let's start with the career services paradigm shift. You know, I. I try to pick the brains of uh, some other uh, executive directors, assistant deans, uh, assistant vice presidents of career development uh, all across the nation. Um, Princeton, Stanford, uh, University of Miami has got a great program over there and really just try to collaborate and capitalize on some of the best practices that are already out there. At the same time, add a little bit of uh, uniqueness and our own touch and some of the ideas that we have which are uh, quite profound, quite novel and really tailor it to our location. So we see an elevation of career services, giving that career services leadership that extra value, um, and really just uh, letting people know that career services is part of, of that university network, and we need that university network really to bring career services leadership to the point where institutional influence and the ability to really look at the stakeholders and help students to, to leverage the power of that network uh, becomes incredibly important. As far as moves and mergers, I've seen career services centers that have moved their entire office into alumni relations. And I think that the alumni connector is actually, it's become more prominent, it's become more important. If you think about it, if a company hires an alumni and they perform well, that company is going to take a second look at that university and it may not be a university that they regularly recruit from so that it so that some of those students really play a key role in not only internships but bringing those 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 career centers to those companies that normally may not recruit from them and it open up so just a wealth of opportunities things like externships um, even at the graduate level they may take a second look and say hey I think they have some really strong programs let's take a look at maybe we can recruit from them as well so um, and then you look at money, space, and people, and I really took this from an article I read from uh, the director at Stanford, continue to sort of pick his brain time to time and just look at some of the, um, the new trends that he talks about, which I think are very much on point with uh, some of the trends that we talk about and that we're seeing. So money, space, and people is really the uh, third one, and you think about that, and it's, you know, career services has greater visibility, has greater accountability. Institutions recognize now the value and that and with that value, with that importance, with the, with the with the career services being really the litmus test, you have to allocate the the correct amount of resources, and so those can come in the form of additional positions, operational funds, grant or seed money, and we've had alumni, you know, grant all kinds of things from naming you know a center or a room or or sponsoring an event or even sponsoring a platform uh, like we have LEC Connect. So, um, you know. You know, and then renovate, renovating a space to make sure that we are um, able to to really fill the form, you know, of what we're seeing uh, for the future. 
ecosystem rather than place, right? The days of, of uh, being a brick and mortar center, and I love the word center because I, I always compare our department as a, a sort of magnet, you know, for students. But I think that the days of being a brick and mortar center are really over, and so we have become a, a presence that permeates the institutional culture and experience. And then I think career outcomes is something that, you know, you don't just say oh, career services is responsible for that. I think you really have to think outside the box and say, you know what, this has got to be part of a, a, a success culture uh, for the entire university and it's got to permeate the institutional culture and experience. And so I think it's everyone's responsibility at the university and we really need to sort of leverage that complex network. Looking at customized connections and communities, you, you think you, you hear the word connector a lot, you hear the word connections a lot, and I think that's what it's about. It's about building connections and communities. Looking at that social capital, uh, looking at your social network, and encouraging students to network organically, to network authentically, and also just to be genuine in their conversations. And so you see changes in for people moving away from career fairs to what they call meetups, and um, other kinds of events where uh, it's focused on meaningful conversations rather than just the stressful uh, context of, of, of a career fair where everyone's rushing and, and you're not going to remember anyone's names and you're trying everything you can do to really get in front of somebody and there's maybe four or five people waiting to speak to an employer and chances are they're not going to remember your name and you're going to end up applying via OCR, on-campus recruiting or on-campus interviewing anyways. And so really looking at that model, challenging that model, and a lot of the student-driven feedback is kind of going away from that model and focusing on, on networking, which is quite interesting. In many campuses, uh, I know Princeton, for example, Stanford have already sort of adopted that and, and gone away with, with career fairs, and we're actually in the process of, of looking at that ourselves, possibly even as soon as fall. Uh, I think, you know, uh, I was listening to one of the keynotes at uh, the NACE conference a couple years ago, and uh, they talked about be a hub. Be a hub. Your career services center needs to be a hub, and I think that being a hub of connectivity is really uh, a focal point for, for us. Chaos and happenstance, it's a hyperactive era of career connections, and so really looking at how do we lure chance out of hiding by pursuing curiosity, by taking risks, by being persistent, by being flexible, by being optimistic, and embracing that chaos and uncertainty is, is, is part of the career development process is very important. Think of how many of us really, myself included, had a just a direct career trajectory right after graduating. Not too many. I think most of us were looking for that, for our true ambition, and when we found it, when we found that passion, when we found what motivated us, we almost reverse engineered, thought about a position, reverse engineered, thought about that passion, right? Thought about that, that ambition and reverse engineered to find the career that we want, the, the thread through all those positions, and, and, and then you find yourself in the position that you are today. Uh, hopefully, and you love what you do. So, you know, when you think about entrepreneurship, and I think a lot about entrepreneurship, I think about um, how do we get some of those digital startups, and, and my older brother has launched, you know, his own sort of digital startup uh, company called Spaces. And what it does, it's really talking about sort of the new era of storytelling. You can actually create these virtual realities and, and mixed realities and, and tell a story through these, through these spaces that you create and he uh, partnered up with somebody from DreamWorks where he was all also at DreamWorks just kicked it off and I think about you know my older brother sort of uh, working on on these amazing projects and I think about the students today that I meet who are so interested in entrepreneurship and just how important it is for them to understand that entrepreneurship is in fact a discipline that you can get better at and so it comes down to hypothesis testing if you think about it how many of us pick a career and that's what we do no we, we we, we want, we target a career, and then we sort of test that hypothesis and find ourselves maybe in a different uh, career. And I wish it was as, as easy as, you know, just picking the career that we want, but it doesn't work that way. It's almost as if you have to create your own personal business plan and refine that, right? Any business plan, when you launch it, you don't necessarily stick to that plan. You test it out, and it's hypothesis-driven, and then as you realize that you've made some mistakes and things like that or something's not working, you modify that. And so I think it's really the same concept that you have to think about when it comes to your career. Additionally, I think that, you know, even though it's such a, there's such a high failure rate for, um, for entrepreneurship, 
you know, nine out of ten or, or whatever it was when I was graduating from UCLA. I think it's important to understand that failure, that fast failure, um, and being able to be resilient and bounce back from that and really go at it again. You know, if you love what you're doing and you really believe in it, go at it again a second or third or fourth time until you are, in fact, successful. Career outcomes is something that I've been talking to my team a lot about, really trying to build the new career services career outcome model. And so the idea is really to track forward instead of tracking right after graduation and working under that kind of pressure where you need to find out how many people are employed after three months, after six months, beginning that process very, very early, day one, building those relationships with students and understanding, helping them understand the value of reporting career outcomes and how that affects even the rankings of the university and increases the value of their degrees. Uh, and, and again, it comes down to that success culture, right? A success culture that you know students want to be a part of, and you're not just asking them for for an outcome. Return on investment, right? It's uh, higher education. I think is is under the microscope now, and it's ever been more prominent. And so, really looking at what is the assessment tools tool that we're using, looking at organizations like NACE, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, who puts out those first destination survey standards and really reevaluating yours. And not only that, but really looking at the career outcomes model apart from the assessment. I think that we're not quite there yet, but my team and I have already been working on it and I had launched um, a project called Project Track Forward um, in my former institution, which was very successful. And we were able to really build benchmarks and, and, and really um, target certain uh, outcomes so that we could consistently and systematically achieve those and beyond and we were able to do that in many different locations and so modifying that for our current locations what we're working on it and I think you're going to hear more about that approach uh, or approaches like it in the future. We looked at our at our buzzworthiness you know in our brand and, and we focused on career alignment more so than just a job or a career and we looked at that and and we wanted to really focus on the connections and, uh, and really highlight what it is to be a career center in a, in a metropolitan city such as Chicago. I must say that I'm real pleased with, with our new branding. Being buzzworthy and then really complementing sort of the buzzworthiness with, with our technology. Um, our technology really needs to be cutting edge, state of the art, and, and really supporting many of our um, initiatives. You know, we think a lot about brand strategies and things like that and, and really looking at what is it that we that we can do. And I, I remember watching a video about the University of Miami and they actually, I don't know if it was gifted or, or they dec uh, they had a decor in their career center, a new state-of-the-art career center, the Topple Center, and they actually had just artwork that really supported entrepreneurship, finding your passion, loving what you do. I mean, I was just, you know, my jaw dropped when I saw it and I just, you know, uh, commend them for, for what they're doing, but just... Uh, I think it's very important for a career center to, to build that identity. You know, equip ourselves with that technology, you know, tools for students such as, you know, to, 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 to be effective at Skype interviews and those kinds of things. And you think about uh, social media being one of the greatest challenges of career services. It's changed the landscape of, of service delivery completely. Engagement and really the meaning of connectivity. We talk so much about connections. We are, for example, looking at Handshake. Great tool. <laughs> Great tool. Love it. And uh, merging our, our existing database into a tool like that, hopefully, I would love to see it happen this summer, but it'll probably be next summer. 1220 is our, is our career outcomes tool. We call it the Quinlan Student Survey, powered by 1220, and it's, it's been fantastic. I only have uh, wonderful things to say about it, as well as the, uh, the, the team of support that we have. And I think when you look at the new technology, the most successful career centers are, made, are the early adopters of those new platforms and things like that. Obviously there's a ton, so you can't adopt them all, but really taking risks on the right ones and communicating that to leadership, merging technologies really deserve a chance. With the paradigm shift in, in, in career services, career staff have to upgrade their skills and knowledge. And I think they need to really change their attitudes and philosophy about some of the new needs of, of our stakeholders. Look at how we career coach. You know, we, we think about storytelling and narrative, the narrative approach in the career, career services model, how, how powerful it is to, to teach students to um, tell a story when it comes to their career, how effective that is in, in interviewing, for example. And um, not only that, but we focus not only on interviewing, but interviewing. Um, so that self-reflection, discovering, uh, uncovering and discovering their true ambition. The hot spots that we have to create on campus are very important, whether you call meetups or, or whatever it is. And I think about how I'm going to bring companies that don't traditionally 
recruit at career fairs and how do I bring those career fairs to our career center? How do I bring those companies when they when we may have only one student interested in that in that position? And and that's okay, we'll take it. Tell us about that company. Let's do our research, let's identify those opportunities, whether it's from alumni or friends of the university, and let's bring them on campus. We have a career strategy series. Let's include them in, in a new series, in a new program. It's very innovative, and, and let's talk about that field and hear directly from them and, and build those bridges and build those connections. I think that's it's absolutely, absolutely important. Uh, some of our strategic initiatives, for example, include career outcomes and building that success culture. A lot of people don't talk about externships, job shadowing, and that's in my in my view will be just as important as internships are internships you know are very popular these days but I think externships that job shadowing opportunity for students is very important mentorship program changing the focus of, of them not just on majors and industries and things like that shared interest shared interest and affiliations and, and really uh, understanding what makes a good mentorship relationship and also how do we continue that relationship or how do we break up with a mentor if it is in fact not working when it comes to enticing employers, uh, we have a project which we call Project Enhance. Perhaps I can touch on it just very, very quickly. You think about all these employers that we have, and you think about how do we engage them. And whenever I've walked into a new career center, and, I, and I've probably managed over 30 different career centers in my career, indirectly or directly, or, or had to turn around a location, what have you, connecting, leveraging, and enhancing those employer relationships Taking business cards and building relationships is something that I've always been charged with. I love this Chinese proverb that says, for every hundred men hacking away at the branches of a diseased tree, only one, only one will stop to inspect the roots. And I think that's what it's about. So I look at employer relationships as an iceberg. The problem with the relationship is that it is much like an iceberg. The visible part of the relationship is only the tip of the iceberg and that's what's visible above the water unfortunately. So many of the factors that really determine the quality of the relationship, what's driving it are, is really beneath the water and you have all the focus on the tip, you're looking at quantity, you know, not quality, when the goal is really both and it's about nurturing those relationships and how. And then also just looking at how can technology improve employer relationships if such a large part of the relationship is based on the hidden element, what can we do as far as relationship management systems, Company View, for example, it's a tool that 1220 has, which has helped us really take notes that are important. And we've just we've launched, you know, in the spirit of Maroon and Gold, which is you know our customer service you know, net promoter score uh, initiative, where we're trying to really get our satisfaction rate to be uh, you know second to none. And we've we're offering you know tours tours uh, of the Loyola Museum on Tuesdays and. and had some meetings at the top of the signature lounge at the John Hancock building and, and really just offering employers something that they have they haven't got from other universities I think is is something that we want to do to really distinguish ourselves so that we'll be at the top of their mind looking for forward thinking students. I'll go ahead and uh, take a break now and uh, get into to part two shortly. I hope you enjoyed it and I can you can link with me on, on LinkedIn at any time or uh, shoot me an email directly through the Loyal website and uh, hope to, to connect with you. Hope you're enjoying it. Thank you very much. Gotta enjoy this weather before, <laughs> before it rains again.